All right, so in this third example from chapter nine, we are finally dealing with a board that has weight. And for this example, the first one that we are actually including the weight of the bar, we haven't put anything else onto, um, onto this, the bar itself. So we're just gonna see what it looks like when we put some supports underneath this bar without anything else um, also on top of it. Like I said, the difficulty in this chapter, more than the other chapters where there's lots of different problem types to deal with, there's really only one big problem type that comes out of chapter nine, and so we're gonna see smaller problems ramp up to bigger problems using the same process every time. And so that process starts with drawing a picture of the situation where we have a three meter long, 10 kilogram bar, and there's a support on the far left, we'll call that support number one. And there's a support not at the end, and that is support number two. We've got big bold arrows on our slide. We aren't gonna draw those in this picture because they aren't physically there, but we will see those arrows show up in the force diagram and in the torque diagram. Okay, so we have the force diagram or free body diagram. And so for the free body diagram of the bar, we wanna think about what forces we have acting on this bar. And so we're looking at anything that is in contact with the bar plus the weight of the bar itself. So over here we have F1 pushing up on the bar, F1. Over here we have force two, the support number two, pushing up on the bar. And although there are no other blocks sitting on top of it, we now have in mind that this thing has a weight and so the weight of the bar, we aren't given newtons, we're given kilograms. So we do have to use mg. So 10 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared is 98 newtons. So we'll be using that force when we draw the torque diagram. All right, so for the torque diagram, If you've already watched the first two examples, then I really do urge you to pause the video here and draw out the full torque diagram um, and then see how it matches ours. As a reminder, we can put the axis anywhere that we want to and we will be able to solve the problem. Our lives are easier if we put it at one of the unknown forces, at one of the supports. And since I, in the previous problem, put it all the way on the far right, this time I'm gonna put it all the way on the far left. So with that in mind, try to draw the torque diagram, pause the video if you need to, to give yourself as much time as you want. That way you can see if you're doing the same steps that we're trying to get into our, <laughs> bump the table, that we're trying to get into our heads. Okay. So step one, we draw the bar. Step two, we choose an axis. Step three, we draw in the forces. The force at the axis is not um, included in the torque diagram, so we go out and halfway along the um, bar, we have 98 newtons. We keep going and further along the bar, we have F2. We include the distances. So if we look back at our picture, we're shown that 1.5 meters, it is also worth recognizing that if we're at the end, and this has to act in the middle of the three meter bar, even if we weren't told that number in the picture, but we were told that it's halfway along, uh, or that we were told that that was at the end, we'd be able to solve for that. And the other distance here is from one support to the other. If we look at our picture, it was 1.5 meters to the center and another 0.9 meters to the other support which means that the total distance here is 1.5 plus 0.9, and that is 2.4 meters. That's also what I mean by um, the fact that there may be numbers that show up in our real picture that we do not want to put in the torque diagram because our distances always, always must be relative to the axis. So this force is that far from the axis, this force is that far from the axis. 
then we figure out based on where this axis is, it is impossible to choose clockwise or counterclockwise if we don't have an axis to look at. But based on where this axis is, if we start downwards at the, with this 98 newtons, the only way to go around the axis is to curve around that way. That is the direction that clocks go. And with this axis in mind, if we start upwards, the only way to curve around that axis is to curve around this direction, and that's counterclockwise. So, torques clockwise equal torques counterclockwise. That's one of the two equations for equilibria. And so there's only one clockwise torque here. So force, 98, times distance, 1.5. And there's only one counterclockwise torque here. Our unknown support two force times the distance 2.4 that it is. And the only step of math that we have to do at this point in the problem is divide both sides by 2.4. So our unknown support number 2, we take 98 times 1.5 divided by 2.4, and we get 61.25 newtons. We can round that to 61 newtons if we want to, 61.2, 61.3, any of those numbers are going to be fine. But that's our support number two force. And if we look at the problem, we're asked to find all of the forces and all of the torques that act on the bar. This is the idea of solving for the torques, just making sure that we've counted up um, the torques relative to an axis. That's what that part means. And then for finding all of the forces, we have found the force of gravity, 98 newtons. We have found the force from support 2, 61.25 newtons. And now we need to find the support for um, the force for support number 1. And so we do that by considering the other, um, the other condition for static equilibrium, which is that the net forces add up to 0. And so in that case, we take all of the forces that point up, so F1 plus F2, minus all of the forces that point down, Fg. And I know that that's kind of small, but we're going to, it's just these two forces added together, and we subtract this one because it's in the opposite direction. So F1, which is what we're looking for, plus 61.25 minus 98 equals 0. And so F1 is 98 minus 61.25, and we get 36.75 newtons. And again, if we had rounded this, then this would also be rounded slightly differently, and that's fine too. 61 and 37 is fine. 61.2 and 36.8, 61.3 and 36.7. Um, I think you get the idea. But the main point here is that if we have two different unknowns, we will have to rely on both of these conditions for static equilibrium, and that's going to be the most common thing that our um, problems will see. So I will, um, I'll probably zoom in on this part so that you can see it here, one condition and two conditions, um, but otherwise, after the zoom in, we'll come back to my face. I will see you in the next one.